comes to me, you understand? So let me get mine first. Then after I get mine, you can do what you want to do. On March 11, 2005, Jadakiss released the most scathing, callous, and lyrical diss record since the inception of the genre that we know as hip hop. In this video, I'm gonna break down all the elements that make a great diss record and why Checkmate by Jadakiss is the greatest diss record hip hop has ever witnessed. But first, what makes a great diss record? And why is there even diss records in hip hop? It's rare you see this occur in other genres, but it's a common occurrence in rap music. I mean, imagine Michael Jackson going at Prince while moonwalking across the stage, or Willie Nelson going at Ray Charles singing about turning him into a pack. We just don't see it in other genres. At its foundation, hip hop was built from poverty and the instinctual need to get out of it. Hence, the battle. When hip hop first emerged from the boogie down Bronx, an MC had to battle other artists to be known and respected. From the days of Cool Mo D and Busy B to the current wave of auto tune meme rappers, hip hop has and always will be a competitive sport. Okay, now back to the question at hand What elements make a great diss record? First, it's lyrical. Syllables, metaphors, storytelling, double entendres, or better yet, triple entendres. Kendrick Lamar is a prime example of this first element. An MC whose advanced technical skills and witty entendres take a minute to digest, and what you're left with is countless breakdown videos of how one Kendrick line has five different meanings. But my point is, people appreciate deeper meaningful lyrics that are clever as it is personal. Kendrick essentially committed murder through poetry in motion, treating his verses like scriptures and as a weapon against imitators. While 616 in LA is a showing of Kendrick's masterful wordplay, Meet the Grahams is a display of thematic literature brilliance. Whether it's dope wordplay or exceptional storytelling, a diss record needs to have some type of lyrical advantage. The next element that makes a great diss record is it's personal. For instance, when Jay-Z released the infamous diss Super Ugly and proclaimed he skated in Nas's baby mother's jeep and left condoms in her baby seat, all gloves are off. And in similar fashion, when the late great Tupac proclaimed on Hit'em Up he had sexual relations with Biggie's wife, you couldn't help but think it was personal. And that's what made it stick, it gives the oohs and the ahs. Now did Tupac really have sexual relations with Biggie's wife? That's yet to be proven, like Drake's 11 year old daughter. Which leads us to our next element. A great diss record always hits harder when it's factual. For instance, in 2001, Jay-Z debuted the diss track Takeover at Hot 97 Summer Jam concert in front of 50,000 people. In the song, Jay-Z accuses the late great prodigy of being a ballerina dancer and even says in the song he has pictures to prove it. Lo and behold, as Jay-Z performed the diss track, he pulled up the pictures of a young prodigy for all in attendance to see. It would later be revealed that the picture was taken at the dance studio of Prodigy's grandmother. The last element that makes a great diss record is what I like to call the intangibles. You could rap until you're blue in the face all you want, but at some point you gotta move the crowd. When KRS1 faced off against MC Shan and the Juice Crew in the 80s, it was KRS1's ability to move the crowd with his smash The Bridge Is Over. KRS1 vs MC Shan wasn't a rap battle, it was a once in a life event between two heavyweights. Look, at its core, the outcome of the Kendrick and Drake beef boiled down to cultural authenticity. The hype surrounding Tupac surviving the infamous quad studio shooting and the scathing diss that followed is something that can't be forced or planned. These are what I like to call the intangibles. Look, Checkmate has all the elements. Lyrically, it's impressive. I mean, I'm pretty sure Jadakiss came out the womb putting together clever multi-syllable raps. It's personal. Not a lot of people know that Styles P of the Locks believed that his album was pushed back due to 50's pull on Interscope Records, which Styles P was also under. What I could say though is, like, like if you if if you did stop my record, which you say you did, like if you ain't like me, like me from the streets, you can't not like me, and I can't I ain't really stop not your like record. you because I don't know you. And you I ain't stop your me. record. Listen, I, I, I don't one I don't dislike you, you enough. Before you even got on, I don't dislike anybody enough to stop them from eating. Period. I don't know if you got kids. I don't know how you feed them. Alright, that's cool. I don't know what you just like. I, I wouldn't do that. And lastly, Checkmate is a factual diss record with intangibles that are unique to Jada. Checkmate is exactly what the title suggests. It has Jadakiss spitting lyrical bombs that 50 can't escape, not only from a rap purist perspective, but objectively speaking as well. Jadakiss starts the record off by chipping at 50 Cent's bulletproof persona by laying down the facts. But I gotta keep it a buck, this whole beef was centered around the hype of 50 Cent being the Goliath that he was at the time, and Jada was playing David. Look, 50 Cent aka Ferrari F50 was the biggest rapper on the planet point blank period. As he put it, he could have sold a blank CD and the shit would have sold a million in the first week. Fresh off the heels of his debut album Get Rich or Die Trying, 50 Cent released his sophomore album The Massacre and on that album was a song called Piggy Bank in which 50 Cent essentially dissed every single rapper who did a song with Ja Rule, including Jadakiss. 
In the song 50 Raps, Jada don't fuck with me if you wanna eat Cause I'll do your little ass like J-Day Mob Deep Yeah homie in New York niggas like your vocals But that's only New York dog. your ass is local Little did 50 know this would set off a barrage of diss records from the Locks camp But no diss would hit harder than the masterpiece that is Checkmate by Jada Kiss. The song was a direct response to Piggy Bank and 50's proclamation that he was playing chess not checkers But in reality, Jada checks off all the elements of a great diss record Let's get right to it where it reads like a page out of The Art of War, Jadakiss starts to track off by congratulating 50 on selling 1.1 million CDs of his sophomore album, The Massacre. You did it, baby! Congratulations, homie! You made history! 1.1 million in a short week! <laughs> we screw a press conference! Press this on your conscience! D-Block! Cheers! I ain't mad, I don't wanna sound mad, I feel marvelous. Deep block, double R, fucking faggot. Jadakiss starts the verse off by first acknowledging he's going against the champ while also foreshadowing he's gonna expose the flaws in 50's bulletproof persona. Jadakiss uses the ideology behind my enemy's enemy is my friend. By shouting out the man responsible for getting 50 Cent shot 9 times, Kenneth Supreme McGriff, while also referencing 50 Cent's infamous song Ghetto Koran as essentially dry snitching. See me, couple hood niggas behind stars. I heard you put a couple good niggas behind bars. Pray. I might never sell that much, but you could bet your last two quarters. I never tell that much. Huh? What makes this diss record so effective is Jadakiss's ability to chip away at 50 Cent's bulletproof persona by stating objective facts. Two things were true. One, 50 Cent wasn't a predicate felon like his homie Tony Ayo. And two, how are you the king of New York when you live in Connecticut? Yeah, you got a felony, but you ain't a predicate. Uh -uh. Never the king of New York, you live in Connecticut. <laughs> you don't be in the hood, you be in the woods fucking with me, so we really gonna be for good. Huh? The genius in this record lies in Jadakiss's ability to make a mockery of 50 Cent getting shot nine times. 50's buzz was surrounded around him getting shot and surviving, and Jada was able to flip this to his advantage in the most witty and disrespectful manner. <laughs> Since when has it become cool to get shot and not shoot back? Now, I don't got a problem with clout. You ain't get shot again yet, so what's your second album about? <laughs> It'd take a lifetime to see kiss. You had to get shot nine times to be rich. Look, I'm not saying 50's a whack rapper, but let's keep it a buck. 50 getting shot nine times played a big part in his four-year run. Jada would keep laying down facts, such as him having real songs with the late great Notorious B.I.G., while 50 songs with B.I.G. was put together after Biggie's death. Be laid up stiff, I spit straight up piff, I did real songs with Big, no made up shits. Look, Jada isn't afraid to acknowledge 50's rise from his days with producers Tone and Polk to his collaborations with Nas and the Bravehearts. Be laid up stiff, I spit straight up piff, I did real songs with Big, no made up shits. There really are no filler bars with this record. Every bar hits its mark. For instance, in the next clip, Jada exposes how 50 Cent bit Ja Rule's singy song style and plays on the idea that he's too commercial to be rapping all that gangster shit. Pitch a kiss, not come out swinging. It's like going to see 50 at a show and he don't come out singing. Jada continues to masterfully chip away at 50's armor as he goes at 50 Cent's skill level as an MC. Your rap's a preschool. You made a lot of money, now be cool. For swell up your lips like seafood. Mm. Now get a mic check. You don't stand a chance to dance with me, dog. Your steps ain't right yet. Uh -uh. Block is just fine. Homie to D straight. Most likely your new CD is a weed plate. Bunch of love songs. 100% pure garbage. Ah, just something to break up buds on. You should just sell clothes. And sneakers, cause out of your whole camp, your flow's the weakest. In a matter of only two minutes, Jadakiss pulled off a David vs. Goliath moment, using his wit and superior pen to point out factual flaws in his opponent while effortlessly turning 50's personal triumphs into straight up L's. The way Jada ended the track by flipping 50's hook was a play out of 50's own book, who's known for flipping people's hooks on mixtapes all the time. Look, Checkmate to me is the magnum opus. It's the diss record that every rapper wishes they made because it checks off all the elements to form two minutes of what Jadakiss likes to call straight up piff. I go by the name of Nugs, and this is that dope shit.